Welcome to today's daily worship. Today's passage is Luke chapter 22, verses 24 to 32. Surviving Times of Testing A dispute also arose among them as to which of them was considered to be greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors. But you are not to be like that. Instead, the greatest among you should be like the youngest, and the one who rules like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table or the one who serves? Is it not the one who is at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials. And I confer on you a kingdom, just as my Father conferred one on me, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. We'll now take a closer look at today's passage. It has been said that unusual spiritual warfare in the Christian life is often a sign of unusual favor. It is the anointing. God's empowering presence on a believer that draws the attention of the enemy. It's as if the anointing oil attracts all the flies. This is because where we are most vulnerable is where we place the most value. For some, it's your business or finances that may dip. For others, your integrity or reputation will be questioned. It could be that important relationships come under strain. In verse 31 and 32 of today's passage, Jesus tells Peter that Satan has asked to sift him as wheat, but then reassured Peter that he was praying for him that his faith may not fail. In other words, the Lord did not send it, but he didn't stop it. He permitted the testing. Whatever the source, the testing will place pressure on you and cause you to honestly reassess where you find your confidence, stability, and sense of security. The pressure is intended to purify. The sifting is for our sanctification. When everything is being shaken, we can remain steadfast and stand firm but only if we are building on a foundation that is indestructible, immovable, and eternal. As with Simon Peter, the Lord is on your side. You will not be tested more than he knows you can take. You may falter, but your faith will not fail, and you will emerge from the test, refined, refueled, and refocused. While temptation never comes from God, sometimes he does permit it, to test the authenticity and genuineness of our faith. With temptation, the source is always the enemy, and his purpose is to have you fail, and then to bring condemnation, guilt, and shame. With testing, the source is God, and the purpose is to have you pass standing firm and emerging victorious, purified, and ready. Whatever test you face in your life, let it teach you something and treat it as training for whatever work God is getting ready for you. Let the trial be used so that God can prepare you for what he has prepared for you.
Welcome to today's reflection. In the silence of this time of reflection, allow God to minister to you. Bless Him in your heart, thanking Him and praising Him as He blesses you with His presence. Ask the Holy Spirit to equip, empower, and embolden you to stand firm in your faith as you face various tests, troubles, and trials in your life. Pray for those in your world that are being severely tested and enduring many struggles. Ask God to meet them in their world and to bring his unconditional love, comfort and strength. As we draw today's time of reflection to a close, pray this prayer with me. Holy Spirit, thank you that you call us and then equip us. Thank you that when we are sifted, you are making sure it all works together for our good. May this time of trial be a doorway to a greater faith, a deeper trust, and a stronger belief that you who call me is faithful. With you by my side, I will overcome. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Yesterday we heard Claire's story, and we heard firsthand how words can affect people deeply. We want to take a moment today to pray about how we use our words and to ask God, through His kindness and mercy, to work in us as we think and as we speak. I invite you to close your eyes if you feel safe and are able to do so. Maybe you would like to place your hand on your heart to simply ground yourself in this moment. Let's pray. Thank you, God that you are a God who speaks. You don't stay silent or withhold your words from us. You speak and you communicate and you declare life over me. We thank you for your written word. Thank you that it is living and active and that it speaks to us even now. We recognize today that our words are powerful. We understand that they have the power to build up or to tear down. I desire my words to bring life and to speak peace and hope. Would you work within me today, God? Would you soften my harsh edges and smooth out the parts of me that have gotten harsh or cynical? God, would you help me to lay down my weapon words, my offenses and defenses? May I speak the life-giving words of Jesus today. Amen. <laughs> 